Hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome to a bit of a different video on the channel today. So I'm sure some of you guys may recognize the Doesn't Click logo on the screen, but for those of you who don't, uh, Doesn't Click is basically a multi-battle team comprised of myself and Fiona, and of course I can't do a Doesn't Click video alone, so Fiona, please introduce yourself. Hello everybody, <clears throat> I'm Yoshi and Lugia, or uh, otherwise known as Fiona, and I've been on a multi-battle team with Ryan since uh, 2018. Yeah, so it's been a while. It was 2018, September 2018 or something like that. I think it might have been. October. October. It was October. It was October, yeah. Absolutely crazy stuff. But basically, guys, today we're having a little bit of a history lesson, so to speak, on basically the Dozen Click team, kind of our past seasons and everything. And basically, I figured it was a good time to do this because I the next uh, multi-battle season is coming up. And I don't know. I like storylines like this and stuff, so I figured we'd uh, we'd come on and share uh, a little bit of our history here. So, AMBL is kind of where it all started. I, Fiona, do you even remember what AMBL stood for? Amateur Multi Battle League. Okay, there you go. Amateur Multi Battle League, because I did not remember that. But yeah, basically, so it's actually a really kind of interesting story on how this team was formed. So, me and Fiona, we're kind of, we had seen each other at local events and everything, but it wasn't really until this, that October, as Fiona said earlier, that um, our friend Sebi put a message in the, uh, in our Facebook chat that we have, a Facebook group chat for can Canadians, and Sebi's like, hey, does anybody want to join this multi-battle league? And I said, I'm on my way leaving the university. I'm like, hey, you know? I'm down to be someone if I'm down to join if someone you know if someone needs a partner, but like I'm really it's whatever, right? And so then from there I go on the bus, and I guess Fiona, what did you say? You said no one ever wants to be your partner. What did you say exactly? Uh, so I I said I want to join, but like nobody really wants to be my partner. So if you guys can find me a partner, maybe I would be interested. Yeah. So I didn't see this message because I'm literally on the bus ride home, and. I guess at the time, Sebi had said, oh, Fiona, you can be Ryan's partner. And obviously, I didn't see the message, so I didn't respond, right? And then I guess I got by the time I had gotten home, I had, there was this message from Sebi in the chat. And in words that I can't really use on the channel, it was like, basically, Ryan, be Fiona's partner, you fool. Basically, in a very family-friendly term. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, and that's kind of how we ended up, how this, uh, how this actually started. And... I think we've done well for ourselves in the, in uh, multi battles, Fiona. What would you say? Yeah, I think we've done pretty well. Uh, it was actually pretty good because um, we won. I think we won two seasons. We did win two seasons. We'll get to that in a bit. And it's interesting how this whole multi battle thing actually developed. There was a lot of things that happened, and a lot of stuff we're actually going to skip over. Probably a few seasons in the middle. It's just not relevant to our history. Uh, it doesn't click name is kind of sparked off the fact that it's, how do I say this? It's both ironic and not ironic at the same time. Like, me and Fiona, obviously, we're both known to, I guess you could call it, I guess choke in VGC or click the wrong button in the wrong times. So obviously it works that way. And then of course you have the fact that I'm six foot two and I think Fiona, five two? Five one. Five one. So it's, it, it's kind of like really awkward thing there, but I am going to just skip to the next slide so you guys have something a little bit better to look at, which is the, why the original logo is Evil Tall, obviously, because Evil Tall is a beast, but it's, uh, it's, the, the, it's ironic, too, because one, yes, we both don't click moves, yes, we don't, you know, one six two, one five one. Uh, our, but when we actually play, and our mindsets for the game are actually so similar, and they complement each other so well, it, that we actually do click, so it's it's a little bit of irony there. But uh, this was basically our AMBL season, uh, AMBL debut. This was the squad we were rocking. And I'm gonna interrupt you because I, I want to add on to what you said. Go for it. But um, <laughs> basically, the name was decided before the before we kind of found out. You know, we were very similar in terms of like yeah. where our weaknesses were in building. Like we patched each other's weaknesses very well. Yep. Like I'm. For example, I'm very bad with spreads. I don't know anything about <laughs> spreads. I just look at numbers and I'm like, oh god, numbers, what do I do? And then you, but, have, then, then you have me building all the spreads. But, um, I'm really good with, like, picking Pokemon that I think are good to fit a niche role or specific. 
and at generally patching teams like that. Yeah. Whereas Ryan is, uh, you know, sometimes it's really easy in Pokemon to get like mind blocked because there's so many Pokemon that are in the game, right? So yeah, of course. Yeah. I I think I think I'm better at it now, <laughs> and I think you're better at spreads now. But but back in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Back in 2018, I was bad. Okay, anyways. Um, speaking of doesn't click, in true doesn't click fashion, we drafted Evil Tall Zygarde. And we were like, oh, it's fine. We'll just keep them on the same side. But uh, that did not work out well. Zygarde is pretty weak. It, the, for reference, in case anybody's wondering, Zygarde didn't have access to power construct. It was uh, banned because of obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a very uh, balanced ability. Yeah. So it would have aura break, which means we would be uh, reversing our own aura. So like instead of dark aura giving that big boost, it actually reduces. It's a drop instead, <laughs> which is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. I think we actually ended up dropping Zygarde halfway through the season. Yeah, I think we dropped it for Kirim. Uh, maybe. I I don't even know. Possibly. You know what? Yeah, because we only had ten people. 10 picks. That's where Kyurem came from there. We dropped it. From, yeah. We ended up dropping it for Kyurem. But uh, I think we ended up like, was it top 8 we finished or top 4? And I think we actually lost to Sebi. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I don't know. This this season's a little hazy. This season's a little hazy. <laughs> I'm going to uh, keep this going because I don't want to uh, keep this video dragging out for too long. I'm probably aiming for about 15-ish minutes. But uh, championships? Multi-battle conference? So, basically... What happened here is the AMBL, in so few words, kind of fell apart. And a few of the players from there kind of merged and switched over to go to the multi-battle conference. And long story short, same concept, multi-battle draft league. Uh, doesn't click, transferred right on over. And uh, this was actually our first multi-battle conference draft. Yeah. And uh, we, I basically the entire thing, point of this, this was in... Uh, Ultra Sun and Moon, so you had access to two Z-Moves and two Megas. Yep. Like, for example, one side had the Mega, the other side had the Mega, and then same with Z-Moves. Yep. So you could really build well. You, basically, the goal is to track, like, two Megas that you like. So, like, one side could have Gyarados, the other side could have Gardevoir. And um, we had access to, like, there was some Legendaries that were allowed. So Kirim kind of struck my eye, because uh, some better ones got taken. So yep. I was like, I think we can go with Kirim. And yeah, then we did. Then we just went on and won with Kiram. So I mean, yep, it worked out. And I really do like this draft mainly because there's you know a sable eye on it. But was this the yep. Rotom? Was this the Rotom Heat that we went two fifty two, two fifty two screens on? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I don't know. Two fifty two, two fifty two screens Rotom is just kind of something we we ran that one season. It was just it was really dumb because it shouldn't have worked, but it did. But two fifty two, eight two fifty two. Special attack? I think it was special attack. I don't even think we had any speed on it. It was really dumb. You don't even need speed. <laughs> oh my goodness. You remember that week? <laughs> yeah. So we had Kyurem and we were building a spread. I'm like, Fiona, we don't need speed. What do we need speed for? Basically, then we, I, I think we were plus one. I don't even know how we, we got. We were plus one. We just got outsped by Garchomp. Yeah, we got outsped by Garchomp. <laughs> And I, and then Fiona's like Ryan, you see what I mean by it? we didn't we needed the speed and I'm like yeah we needed the speed but anyways we won the championship that year and I believe season two actually kicked off almost immediately following and this is where I think this was my favorite team that we had oh this, I agree this team I think right this was here the best draft we've ever had like the fact I, I think the fact they let us draft this was disgusting yeah. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Electabuzz actually gets access to follow me in multi-battles, since it's a transfer up move. Mm -hmm. So we had follow me, we had the G-Max EV move for pressure, but we I don't think we ever used once, but we would always it's bluff. It's not G-Max, it's, it's a Z-move. Right, it's a Z, the Z-move EV. I'm so sorry. Uh, Sword and Shield broke me. But <laughs> so basically what happens is, uh, for those of you guys who just joined in Sword and Shield, uh, it's a Z-move off of Last Resort. It like doesn't do any damage. But it's like a status move where you get plus one in all stats. Wasn't it plus two in all stats? Actually, I think it was plus two in all stats. Yeah, it was plus it was, two. It was, it was plus two in all both stats because I remember the joke used to be it was Eevee Mancy, like a play on words of Geomancy. So yeah. And then what you do is you could either uh, you baton, pass baton pass out or psych up beside it. You had multiple options, and we had the Latios there to psych up. It was 
We never actually brought it once. Like, we would bring it as a bluff, but I don't think we ever brought it. It was a really good bluff. People had to prep for it every week. Mm-hmm. So it just forced uh, teams to run, like, stuff like Haze when they didn't need it. Yeah. I also think some of these videos are up on my channel. So if they are, I'll probably link the playlist uh, about now. But, like, I don't know. Palkia, Entei, like, there's so many Pokemon on this team that are just, I don't know, just feel so right to use in a draft league. I, uh, some of the key picks that I really like, uh, but I want to talk about Mega Aggron, actually. Mega Aggron was kind of our MO, I, I would say. He was, yeah. he was our guy. He was a C-tier pick, and let's, I'm going to be honest with you, I do not think he's, like, a C-tier at all. I think he's, like, B. Because Defin- his typing is so good, oh, yeah. and the coverage it gets is amazing. Like, it's, its bulk is really good. The fact that it's got filter to, like, weaken super effective moves, mm-hmm. and the fact that it turns into pure steel instead of rock steel. Yep. It, it's, an, it's an absolute beast when it had the Mega. Now, now Nowadays, not so much since they took away its Mega, but uh, he was an absolute beast back in the day. I, I do miss using him. Uh, Torterra's got a pretty interesting story, so basically we picked it up one week for one of our future week matchups. We brought it to that matchup, and we got frozen. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Um, two more I want to talk about I, is, uh, Mega Latias. I remember, since I personally ran it in 2018, I thought it was a really good Mega in 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to get Ryan to get on it, and he, he wasn't, he was skeptical at first, but, uh... I'm, all, I'm always so skeptical. Much- the thing is, I'm always skeptical at first on mods that I don't know about, you know? Like... Yeah. It's not that I didn't want to take it. It's that it was that was one of the things. It was just like you know, uh, is it that good? Is it as good as you're making it out to be? And it was. Yeah. It was a beast. I think it died. Yeah, we ran the support set at one week. Yeah, I think it died. Great. I think it got. I think it died more than it actually took lives. But it just put on so much pressure and let Pelkia, Ente, Agron just really wreck, really really wreck teams. It was great. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think Lottie got five kills in one week. It, it did, we did, we did go off with it that one week. I do remember that. That was great. But, um, the last one I want to talk about is Swampert. <laughs> Swampert, I think, what tier was that? Was it D or C? At the time, it was C. It's been moved up since, but at the time, it, I believe it was C. Well, that's because of the fact that Sword and Shield cut out a bunch of Pokemon that aren't very good, so. Yeah. Basically, Swampert was like a steal for where it was. Oh, yeah. Big time And... Steal. We it put in so much as you can see we drafted it two years in a row. Yep. We put in so much work with it. Like as a C tier pick, if your C tier pick is putting in work, that means it's a good mon. A hundred percent. And to me, if you look at our team, right? Uh what's Swampert lose to? The only thing that really breaks Swampert is a good grass type. Uh we have an Ente that the grass types don't want to see. Palkia, I mean, it's going to hit something hard with Ice Beam. It's not dying to a grass move. Uh, Scallopede, uh, even Laddie cuts down to grasses pretty well because a lot of grass are grass poison. So, mm-hmm. like, it was just a really well-constructed team, I think, and Swampert really complemented the team well. As you can see, two seasons, Swampert won, back-to-back. <laughs> yeah, I really love I'm glad he's back in Sword and Shield. Yeah, we don't talk about Season 3. We don't talk about season three. There, I, I think we got a little, little, uh, little screwed over in terms of uh, judgment calls and everything like that. But uh, uh, I think it was more to do with the. We were also very inexperienced with Dynamax yeah, mechanics. Exactly. Yeah. Like it cost us so many weeks because we didn't plan properly. Agree. Although I still think we should have made it. That's all I'm gonna say. I agree. I'm not gonna say saying... it's still on us, but I still think we should have made it. Yeah. All I'm saying. All I'm saying. Um. Alright, so basically the reason I wanted to do this video, guys, is because I wanted to announce basically that the multi-battle conference is coming back for the next season. Uh, We will be having our draft review probably in a few weeks. I don't want to make it too early because I don't want to do the draft review and then wait for like another two, three weeks for this season to actually commence. So I'll probably hold off on the draft review a little bit, but look forward to starting in early February, I believe. I think that's the timeline, right, Fiona? Yes. Alright. Uh, doesn't click, obviously, we'll be returning. I wouldn't have done this video had we not. Um, mm. <laughs> and I think the video is starting to drag on a little bit, Fiona. Do you have anything else to say before I do throw a few shout-outs out? Um, pretty much. It was, this, this league was really good for us because we ended up becoming really good friends in VGC after doing this. Yep. Like, it was more than just, you know, like a multi-battle thing, which is kind of fun, a fun format. Yeah. But like, um... 
basically this this helped us become like really good friends and team builders together and we've built many successful teams even towards vgc and we've even helped each other improve in vgc as well mm-hmm. which is really funny to think about yeah, <laughs> but it all started like a multi-battle league it's crazy how it doesn't that's what i wanted to talk about yeah, and no. um it's yeah. uh it's actually crazy how much this whole doesn't click thing actually ended up clicking for us like I don't, I don't know, it's really weird to, for me to think, go back and think about, like, imagine, like, back in 2017 and early 2018, I was bad, guys, okay? Like, I had a f- little bit of success nearing the end of 2018, like, I was just starting to get decent, but, like, I don't know, I think pairing up with Fiona and her matching my weaknesses and me matching her weaknesses, or patching, I should say, the better word, just seemed to work out really, really well for us. So as much as the name isn't doesn't click, the name really does, we actually do click pretty well, but... With that being said, guys, I do want to shout out a few people. Uh, first off, uh, Dave, Austin, you guys are amazing. I believe Austin was actually the first one to actually begin the MBC after the whole fallout of uh, AMBL. AMBL. Thank you. I forgot about the name again. Um, and then I believe Dave jumped on the boat as well. And then Dave covered up when Austin had to step back for a bit. And now basically we have a full uh, moderator team for uh, the MBC, which I myself am part of. I am part of, but uh, that's not important here. Basically, what I'm saying is thank you to the mod. This doesn't run without you guys, and it's amazing to have you guys as uh, as this league uh, progresses. I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, another big shout-out. I want to shout-out the Amoongus Burnouts, guys. I am going to link their channel. Uh, they have been doing amazing work uh, publicizing the league, uh, doing power rankings every week, uh, draft reviews, draft overviews, draft guides, all of that kind of stuff. They're amazing. Matt, Anthony, you guys are killing it over there. Keep things up like that. Looking forward to what you bring this season. And uh, with that, guys, we also do have a Twitter. I'm going to link in the description down below for Multi Battle League if you guys want to follow up on some of the action. And uh, keep an eye out on that. Feel free to do so. And I think with that, Fiona, this might be it for the history of Doesn't Click. Uh, did I miss anything? No, I think I think we've covered everything very well. I think so as well. I mean, I, I do apologize, guys, for the video dragging on a little bit. My intention was not for it to go this long, but it was kind of just a lighthearted video, just kind of me and Fiona talking about kind of the past of uh, the uh, doesn't click here. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Fiona, do you, you have anything to say before I do the outro? I don't think so, other than, I don't know, follow me on Twitter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me at Yoshi and Luke. No, I'm just kidding. I will. Fiona's Twitter is in the description as well, guys. But uh, Fiona. <laughs> you should link your Twitch as well. <laughs> my Twitch is already in the description, Fiona. True. I'd put my Twitch in the description of every video. And guys, I'm going to get out of here. I still don't have an outro. And I think me saying that I don't have an outro is actually my outro. But I still don't have an outro. I'm going to get out of here before I ramble on, guys. And uh, thank you so much for watching.